Have you ever wanted to make your own Arch Linux based distribution? Well, you have come to the right place because today I will be showing you how to make an Arch Linux based distribution with Arch ISO. So in order to follow along with this tutorial, you will need to be on Arch Linux because there is a package which is Arch Linux specific called Arch ISO. And you can install it and I already have it installed. So now I need to make a directory for our distribution. I'm going to call mine Sid Linux. Really no reason why, but whatever. So we need to copy over the template configuration files to this directory. So cp user bin arch iso, not, not bin, share arch iso. And then there's configs. So there's two profiles, baseline and relang. So baseline is the bare minimum packages that you need to get a working Linux system. However, you most likely want to use relang because it has some packages which are required to boot it up on a real system or even a VM. If you are going to be using baseline, it will shrink your ISO down from about a gigabyte all the way down to, I believe, 400 megabytes. But just for simplicity, I will be using Relang. So in here, there's a couple folders and files, but I'll get to that later. So if I go into the config directory, there's many, many files, well, only four right now, but pacman.conf is the first one that I'll be looking at. So this is just a normal pacman config file. So if you want to enable multi-lib, you can do that. Um, you can also add your own custom ones. So profiledef.sh. You can change your ISO's name in here. So you can add all your information for the ISO. So if you need to add any file permissions, you can do that here. I don't think that I will need any. So now let's go into grub. Is there anything here? Yes. Grub.cfg. Okay. Uh, you have the menu entries. These might be useful. Is there anything in this other file, loopback.cfg? Okay, whatever. I'm just going to ignore this. So, I can also go to EFI bootloader entries and edit the first one and rename this. In syslinux, there are some files. There's splash.png, syslinux.cfg. Is there anything in syslinux.cfg nope no there's nothing of importance there however you may want to edit splash splash.png this is what comes in in the boot menu so now ai root fs basically the ai root fs is the root of the iso like when you boot it up this is what you're gonna get so you have etsy root and user Let's go to Etsy. You have some configuration files. We can edit the host name. There's also the MOTD or message of the day. Basically, when you boot into the system, it'll display this message. So yeah, um, I think I can remove some of this. That'll be my MOTD. Um, next up is passwd. Basically, this is just all of your users. So, that is the shadow file. This is your root password. So, if you want your root user or another user to have a password, then you can put it right here, in between the first and second colon. And to generate that password, you don't actually just put in the plain text password instead type md5 pass and password 
and password should be whatever password you want the root user to have. And then you can copy this and put it into that file. Then we'll go into, um, there's a root, nothing in here. Oh, one important f uh, thing I forgot is the scale directory. Basically, this scale directory will be, like, for example, in your home directory, you have, like, documents, downloads, music. Um, this will be there once you install your system if you use a JustWorks distro, like Mint or Manjaro. Um, and if you're wondering how that works, no, it's not created when it's installing. It's instead created when you create a new user. Basically, the scale directory gets copied over to your new home folder. So I can md document desktop downloads music pictures and videos. The standard folders. And now I can go back to user. Yeah, there's nothing here. Oh, one file that is quite important. If I go back into Etsy. Um, is your OS release. So I will copy my OS release for my host system. Basically, it just contains n info about the distro that you're running. So things like NeoFetch can know which logo to put here and also what to show up here. So I can paste this into here and edit it to my liking. I'm not gonna bother with the links. So now that we've done that, why not install a desktop environment? Um, so I'll go to a file called packages.x86. Basically, this has a list of every package that will be in the ISO by default. So, at the end, I'll add xorg, uh, light dm, light dm gtk greeter, and xfce4. Now, adding a desktop environment will make your ISO a lot bigger. And now it's time to build it. So the command is sudo mkarchiso-v-w bin slash uh, dash o bin um and config. It looks like it's installing all these packages. So once it finishes installing the system, it'll create an ISO out of that new system. And this ISO will actually be bootable. You can boot into it, and you'll basically have a working distribution. So this may take a few minutes depending on how big it is, and how many packages you have. So once that is all done, your ISO will be ready. It'll tell you where exactly it is. And it's 954 megabytes, so why not try it out? Okay, so this is Sid Linux. And it's booting. Oh, what just happened? Shouldn't it open a login screen? Whatever, the message of the day is here to connect to Wi-Fi, it's like with TL. I guess I'll just, oh, I think I forgot to enable the service. So if I start Light DM, it should just take me to the login screen. But there's no password. And in fact, I'm already logged in. Oh, well. It let me in. So if I open the terminal, um, I can read the contents of OS release and it says Sid Linux. It's not Arch Linux anymore. Well, here, here it is, but 
I did not change that. So this is basically a Linux distro. If you want to further improve on this, you can actually make a graphical installer or just write some installation instructions. So thank you for watching this video. If you found this helpful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I am out.